In this video, I'm going to do an example utilizing forces in circular motion. So here I, I have a table uh, set up, and I'm going to say the, uh, the surface of my table is frictionless. I have a mass 2, which is moving in a, a circle around a hole in the table. There's a string attached to, match to, to mass 2, which follows radially to that hole, which then uh, drops down below the table in which it is attached to mass 1. Uh, the, my uh, table is frictionless, and the question I'm asking is what is the, the speed for mass 2 such that mass 1 is stationary? I mean, if mass 2 is, is just at rest, it's going, mass 1 is going to fall, and, and mass 2 is going to go toward the hole. But assuming mass 2 is, is moving in a circular orbit, uh, it's moving in circular motion, what speed could it have such that mass 1 is motionless? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, is uh, and I've done this already, is get a picture. We want our visualization stage, uh, get a good idea of what's going on. In fact, what I might do in, in something like this is uh, sort of look, I'm going to draw a new picture that sort of gives me a um, uh, a look top-down approach here. So I have mass two. This is moving around in uh, in in some sort of circular motion, and I'm now looking at the top of the table. And so I want to be able to um, to look at these from various angles. How does that look like? Uh, sort of edge on. So edge on, uh, I have, you know, here's mass, here's my mass 1. So uh, top down, I can't see mass 2. It's underneath the table. So here's uh, mass 1, and it goes through a hole in the table attached to mass 2. And I'm going to say this is all smooth. You know, there's no friction between the, uh, the, the surfaces. You know, here's the the legs of the table. I, I'm going to assume that uh, that this that this um, that this tension that this rope is uh, always parallel to the table, and that I think that might make it uh, a lot easier to calculate. Okay, but I still I'm going to say everything's frictionless. The the uh, the um, the the rope is is parallel until it goes through the hole, and then it is uh, vertical to the ground. Okay, so it's so this is my sort of visualization stage. I I sort of have a good idea of of what my system looks like now, and so uh, now I need to um, uh, understand what's happening. Well, I I think. I'm going to apply forces and, and uh, uh, Newton's law to this problem, so I think that's the physics that applies. So if I'm going to use Newton's second law, the first thing I have to do is choose an object um, to analyze. And so I think for the... Uh, oh, hold on. Wait. <laughs> I called this one mass 2. Sorry. We should, of course, keep consistent notation between our pictures is is uh, helpful to to call them the same the same object. So I have m m one below the table and uh, m two above the table. Sorry about that. If you're wondering what was going on, all right. So we need to choose an object to work on. So uh, let's choose our first object to be uh, mass one. Okay. So what are the uh, forces? on uh, mass 1, well, um, there's simply gravity. We'll call force due to gravity, and then the uh, tension. All right, so nothing else in contact with mass 1. And so if I do a free body diagram that uh, the tension is uh, giving my string model is going to point up and then my force of gravity points near the uh, center of the earth. Uh, let's give myself a coordinate system for this. I'm going to call this 
up my positive x-axis and so this is going to be simple enough my tension is going to be just the magnitude of the tension I hat my force due to gravity is going to be the magnitude okay this is on mass 1 so my force due to gravity is mass of 1 times the acceleration due to gravity this is the force of gravity on mass 1 it's along the x-axis as I've defined here and the entire magnitude then is in the negative direction All right so I sum these forces which is equal to the mass of 1 times the acceleration of 1 and I'm looking for the condition where m1 is stationary which means the acceleration is equal to 0 so this gives me if I now look at my components here I have that the tension minus m1g is equal to 0 or the tension in the string is equal to the mass of 1 times the acceleration due to gravity. All right, so that's good, fine. Um, that doesn't really tell me anything about mass 2 yet. That's what I want to know, the speed of mass 2. But so now let's look at uh, mass 2. What are the forces on mass 2? Well, this is sort of the best diagram here to look at the, the forces. There's going to be gravity and there's contact between the uh, table and the mass as well as the tension. So right, so what are our forces? We have uh, gravity, gravity, and then we have uh, tension, and we have the normal between the table and the mass. And since we, there's a contact force between the table and the mass, and we said that uh, there was no friction, it was frictionless, so that contact force is only a normal force. All right, so uh, what do those look like? So now I, I need to think about um, the proper orientation for this. So what are my coordinate systems going to look like? Well, I want to work in this radial coordinate system. So, I mean, if, if I look at this right here, I'm going to, you know, I, I'm going to have sort of an R axis that points radially to my mass at this instant in time. And I'm going to have a tangential axis that points tangent to the rotation. And in this uh, orientation, if I have this motion going counterclockwise, if I look for a right-handed coordinate system, this gives me uh, a Z, a positive Z, up. The positive Z is up from table. Remember? And so think how, how important the visualization is to do this this, quanti this uh, quantitative uh, uh, setup. So uh, I have this orientation here in this picture, and given my R and T in a right-handed coordinate system, I remember that I drew this picture looking down at the table. That's the, the orientation of this, this, uh, of this picture. So if positive Z is coming up out of the screen, that means it's coming up from the table. Okay, so if I were to go to this picture over here, uh, in this picture then, I would have my, sorry, my radial axis pointing out uh, from, the, uh, from the center, and then my positive Z is pointing up from the table. And in this picture then, um, assuming it's at the same point in the rotation, then my, my T is uh, into screen. Sorry, you can't read that. But so the T, the tangential is is into the screen, in uh, uh, from this point of view. Okay, so again, I'm I'm very careful to make sure I have uh, a very good visualization of what's going on in this problem. All right, so uh, where do these um, uh, forces point? Well, the force due to gravity that's going to be down. 
uh, the tension is going to be radially, and the normal, well, that's going to be uh, perpendicular to the table. So I guess I'm, first I'm going to look at it from this from this point of view. So sort of from that um, the point of view where this is R and this is Z, this is plus R and plus Z, I'm going to have the force due to gravity, the uh, normal force on the table, and then the tension force is along the string, and that points in, in that direction. All right, so uh, I don't have I don't have any forces along the uh, tangential axis, so the forces there are zero. So I think I can just work with this free body diagram for now. So I want to to solve these, and so uh, I have the uh, the tension then is equal to the uh, magnitude of the tension. It's entirely along the radial axis. And from my picture, it's and my coordinate system, it's along the negative radial axis. And it has uh, uh, nothing along the z, n nor the t either. So I have, you know, three axes here. But in my diagram here, only the, the z, and, z and the r are showing. All right, so my force due to gravity, it has nothing along the radial. It has its entire magnitude, which is the mass of uh, 2 times the uh, acceleration due to gravity. It's along the z-axis, and from my uh, picture, again, I always go to the picture and the coordinate system and the free body diagram to determine the signs. And then, of course, uh, nothing along the tangential as well. And then my normal force, nothing along the radial, uh, it has its entire magnitude, which is normal, along the z-axis, and it's in the positive z-direction from my picture. So this, now, is equal to the mass of 2 times the acceleration of 2. Remember, for each object, the sum of the forces on that object is equal to the mass of that one object times the acceleration of that one object. Never, for, never forget how important that is. All right, so is the acceleration of mass 2 0? No, it's not. It has 0 uh, acceleration in the z direction, but it's moving in a circle, which means it has a mass times a centripetal acceleration in the radial direction. So therefore, we from this, uh, from this expression here, we can sum our components. Well, we first find that the uh, normal force uh, of the table on the object is equal to the mass uh, 2 of the object times uh, g. But we also have that the uh, negative tension negative times the uh, magnitude of the tension is equal to the mass of 2 times the centripetal acceleration, which is equal to negative m2 omega squared r, or negative m2 tangential speed squared over r. So this gives us that the tension is equal to m2 vt squared over r. This is the speed of m2. That's exactly what we want. So before, so here we have the the tension in the string given by m1g, and that tension is providing the centripetal acceleration of, uh, providing for the centripetal acceleration of mass 2. If we equate uh, those two, um, equ the relationships for t, we have m1g we substitute in for t, essentially, vt squared over r. So now we sum for, uh, solve for vt. vt squared is equal to m1 over m2 gr. Our vt is equal to the square root m1 
over m2 gr. Remember when we're looking for uh, the speed such that it just <laughs> that the cart just reaches above the uh, uh, um, loop, we had the the speed equals the square root of gr. So now we have another expression relative to gr, but this time it's it's also the square root of the ratio of the masses. So this is now this this is the speed of mass one moving in a circle such that uh, sorry the, the speed of mass two moving in a circle such that mass one is uh, stationary. And so um, does this make sense if if mass one is larger then uh, uh, the speed has to be um, uh, faster so that makes sense as well as uh, the mass two um, is larger than the the speed can be smaller and then it the dimensions we know are right because this is dimensionless so we still have the square root of g over r which we saw before was a uh, the units of speed and so uh, this sort of on on its face uh, the when we check it out seems to make sense and so this is going to be our final answer for the speed